Guys, it's six o'clock, so I'd like to call the uh, the March 8th City Council meeting to order, please. Tonight, we have uh, Ms. Chris Letson from Asbury Church to um, give us the, uh, the uh, invocation. Let's pray together. God, as we come to the end of a beautiful day, we thank you for the reminder of your beautiful creation. We thank you for every citizen who lives in our city, for every person who calls this home. God, we thank you for the amazing ways that you are moving in our community. God, I pray your blessings on this meeting tonight for our mayor, for our city council persons, for every person who has any role of leadership in our city. God, we thank you and we ask your wisdom and blessings on them as they lead. God, I pray that you would indeed make us a city of light, a city of hope in a world that feels dark and weary at times. God, would you show us how to be those kind of people as we all work together for our great city. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Chris. Now can we uh, have the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And can we get the roll call, please? Mayor Finley? Here. Councilmember Robleski? Here. Councilmember Spears? Here. Councilmember Powell? Here. Council President Shaw? Here. Councilmember Bartlett? Here. Councilmember Denzine? Here. Councilmember Seifert? Here. Looks like we got a quorum, so we'll move forward. Uh, first, we have is approval amendment of, of minutes from February 22nd. Move to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. Is it? We had John. He second. Uh, any uh, discussion? I have one uh, just uh, update. I say update, but change. It's, when I had here, it said comprehensive plan is nearly complete. What it should say is comprehensive plan RFP is nearly complete and will be put out for bids in March. So it's just a couple words that I'll give to Mel and she can change that. Other than that, can I get the vote, please? Councilmember Powell? Aye. Councilmember Seifert? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Spears? <clears throat> Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Motion passes. Let's move into a presentation and, and awards, and we'll start with uh, with Mara with a, uh, a city coin. Yes, sir. Um, it's my pleasure tonight to award the first city coin for 2021 to Mr. Willard Brooks, and I'd like to read this to you. It says, in grateful appreciation for the dedicated support and generous contributions to our community and for positively impacting the city of Madison. Willard Brooks and I worked on the McDab committee together for several years and I asked him to please send me uh, just kind of a biography so that folks can know a little bit about him. And this is what he wrote. Willard Brooks was born in Centerville, Iowa. He moved with his family to Huntsville, Alabama as a teenager in 1979. In his senior year at Johnson High School, he was involved in an automobile accident as a passenger that left him a quadriplegic and a wheelchair user. This did not stop Willard from pursuing his education, and he went on to graduate from the Alabama A&M University with a master's degree in industrial engineering. Willard established himself as a force of nature in three disabled sports disciplines. He is a United States Paralympian in track and field. He is a six-time wheelchair rugby national champion, and he's a two-time wheelchair basketball champion. He was inducted into the Huntsville-Madison County Athletic Hall of Fame in 2018. Most recently, he was instrumental in establishing the first youth wheelchair basketball program in Huntsville that's based out of UAH. Willard currently works for the MDA, which is Missile Defense Agency, and he was awarded the Outstanding Achiever Award by the agency in 2019, and he was also awarded the Department of Defense Outstanding Employee of the Year with a Disability, also in 2019. Willard was appointed by former Governor Bob James to the Alabama Developmental Disabilities Council. He's chaired many nonprofit events that have advocated for people with disabilities in our city and in our county. He served as a board member and treasurer on the Madison City Disability Advocacy Board for many years. And while there, he helped establish all of these programs. 
McDab's Employment and Education Business Seminar to an educate business on disability employment and reasonable accommodations. The emergency evacuation and notification system for people with disabilities in the city of Madison. He helped implement improvements to the special needs playground at Palmer Park. He provided input in developing the draft accessibility plan for the city of Madison. He was involved with these different programs, Madison Adaptive Sports Program, the Special Needs Fishing Rodeo, Trunk or Treat, the Special Needs Easter Egg Hunt, and all of these were held at Dublin Park. He also was instrumental in the Making Wave Swim Program and helped film a video uh, through James Clemens when it first opened called Accessible Parking Challenges that you can see on YouTube to this day. He has been awarded the McDab Employer Award and was instrumental in the McDab Space Camp Scholarship Program. Willard draws his strength from God and his family. Anyone who knows Willard will tell you about his positive energy and how he is a constant source of inspiration. Willard's motto in life is, I don't live with my, I'm, I'm sorry. Willard's motto in life is, I don't live my life based on my disability. I live on my ability to be successful. And I have to say that it has been an honor and privilege to work with Willard with the McDab program. Um, he's not able to be with us here physically today, but he is here on Zoom. And Willard, I would love for you to, uh, if he had been here, he'd have gotten a chance to speak at the microphone, but I would love for you to um, say a few words, Willard. Yes, how you doing? Uh, does everybody hear me? Yes, sir, we can. All right, thank you. Um, yes, I'd like to thank the board for uh, recognizing me with this award, with the uh, coin. Um, I truly in, in, uh, loved doing uh, work for uh, the citizens of Madison with disabilities. And um, I really deeply appreciate this recognition. And um, I, I see a lot of good things coming from McDab and the, city, the citizens of uh, Madison and North Alabama where everybody can um, have a voice and be included. And that's basically uh, what I have. And once again, I am humbled and honored for this award. Thank you so much, Willard. Thank you so much, Mara. Yes, sir. Next, uh, we have a presentation uh, for, of the Life Saving Awards. Thank you. Officer Landrum, Sergeant McCants, Officer DeFazio. On 16 February 2021, Madison Police Officers Jeffrey Landrum, Shannon DeFazio, and Sergeant Ricardo McCants responded to a residence for a medical call for help. Responding officers were informed that a 40-year-old male had been discovered by his wife unconscious and not breathing. Officer Jeffrey Landrum was the first on scene and took decisive action. Assessing the condition of the person in distress, he determined that the patient, Christopher Snipes, was unresponsive and not breathing. He quickly began CPR, performing chest compressions. Officer Shannon DeFazio and Sergeant, Sergeant Ricardo McCants arrived on the scene soon after. Officer DeFazio and Sergeant McCants assisted with the life-saving efforts. Officer DeFazio alternated with Officer Landrum in performing chest compressions, while Sergeant McCants maintained a patent airway and monitored the patient for signs of breathing and responsiveness. <clears throat> Sergeant McCants informed me that by all appearances, their life-saving efforts were unproductive. However, the consistent and determined efforts of these Madison police officers were productive. As Madison fire medics and Hensi medics arrived on scene, officers began to see signs of life. Paramedics took over CPR and life-saving measures. They confirmed a pulse and transported the patient to Huntsville Hospital Emergency Department. Recognizing the stress that this event had on the patient's wife and concern for her ability to safely operate a motor vehicle, Officer Landrum drove her to the Huntsville Hospital Emergency Department. He then told her to call Madison Police when she was ready to go home. Madison Fire and Rescue Battalion Chief Chris Mankin stated that Madison Fire and Rescue, as well as Hensi Paramedics, were very appreciative and impressed with the actions taken by Officers Landrum, DeFazio, and Sergeant McCants. 
He said that without their decisive actions, the patient would not be alive and showing progress at the time that he spoke to. For their ability to maintain courageous calm under stressful conditions and employ their <clears throat> training to take decisive actions, which resulted in saving the life of another person, these Madison police officers are being presented with a life-saving medal. Matter of fact, we have an attendance tonight. Sir, if you would like to stand. This is Mr. Snipes. We are so glad that you are here with us, that our officers were able to intervene, and uh, that you can join us here tonight to see these officers uh, receive their life saving medal. Uh, thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Officer Landrum, please step forward. Now all these certificates say the same thing, so I'm only gonna read it once. Um, <laughs> Officer Landrum, for distinguished service and performance under difficult circumstances during the course of his duties, by which his quick actions, steady composure, and ability to recall training decisively contributed to the saving of the life of another person. Madison Police Officer Jeffrey Landrum is hereby awarded the Madison Police Department Life Saving Medal. Officer Jeffrey Landrum's calm, courageous, and intelligent action will always be remembered. Tonight, Officer Landrum, Landrum is receiving his first life saving medal. He'll be able to wear this with formal uniforms and the ribbon as he pleases. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. This is also Sergeant McCant's first life saving medal. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Wait for it. Now, this is unique because this is Officer Shannon DeFazio's second life saving medal, and she receives a device to wear on her uh, on her ribbon. So, this is your two. There's your certificate. Well done, officer. Thank you. And I'd like to close with adding that this is the epitome of what we do as police officers and the services that we provide, is being able to save a life and make sure that a family member comes home to their family. And we are so glad that we were able to help you and that we were able to serve you on that day. We wish you a long and happy life with us here in Madison. Thank you. Next, we have a presentation from, from the mayor. <clears throat> to get this, this is a proclamation for the Women Owned Business Day. Uh, and where it says here, whereas women own nearly 13 million firms in the United States employ more than 9.4 million workers and generate more than $1.9 trillion in sales as of 2019. Uh, Alabama ranks 15th in the nation of women-owned businesses with a growth rate of 42%. Alabama has an estimated 153,000 women-owned uh, firms employing just over 111,000 people with combined sales of 19 billion. Madison had 1,399 women-owned firms in 2012. And March is recognized as Women in History Month. So whereas the city of Madison values entrepreneurial businesses and seeks to uh, celebrate growth in business ownership among women of the in the community, now therefore I, Paul Finley, mayor of the city of Madison, Alabama, do hereby pro proclaim the day of March 30th, 2021 as Women Owned Business Day in the city of Madison. And I will give that to you, put my mask back on. Yeah, you, you betcha. And take a picture, wait, hold on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to say yeah. just a word, I'll let you. Sure. Yeah, here. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name's Alice Lessman. I am also a Madison City resident, and there's actually four of us, these two and this one, <laughs> um, that live in Madison. Um, 
I am CEO of SignalLink and honored to be the chair of the Women's Business Council this year. We are so excited to stand in front of all of you today representing the over 10,000 women-owned firms in Madison County. There are so many women in the community that deserve to be celebrated for all their hard work and ingenuity in their businesses. So at the WBC, our job is to uplift, encourage, and advocate these firms recognized today by Mayor Finley and the City of Madison. So on their behalf, and on behalf of the Women's Business Council, we just want to thank you. Thank you for your continued support for what we do in our businesses and the community. We're looking forward to a great year. Thank you for your time. Next, we have uh, Ms. Mary Bostic, Executive Dr uh, Director of the Land Trust of North Alabama. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. <clears throat> First, I thank you for the opportunity to say a few words to you this evening, and I also thank you for all you do for conservation and the support you give the Land Trust. We, um, we're honored to actually be able to find ways to connect people with nature, and we certainly appreciate all the opportunities that you give us to make that happen. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we've been doing and what we're gonna be doing in the upcoming months. Uh, of course, as everybody know, life's changed. Um, so things that were planned didn't exactly work out. Um, everybody kind of pivoted and did different things, but we were unique in one respect in that while many uh, businesses and organizations saw declines in usership and they had to close, we actually experienced unprecedented usage and, and activity on our nature preserves. All eight nature preserves in the county uh, saw more use than they've ever seen in any given period of time. Um, and that certainly was true of the Rainbow Mountain uh, Nature Preserve. Um, and it continues to this day. Uh, it was, it peaked, uh, it did peak back in about a year ago, April, May timeframe, but it is still way above uh, what it was. So that meant that we did a lot of the things that we would typically do. So at Rainbow, that involves a lot of trail care, um, both at the pavilion area, the trailhead, and also on the trails themselves. What that looks like for us on the, the trails is there's about three and a half miles of trails actually on the preserve. Um, that involves, you know, cutbacks, removing trees that have fallen across trails, uh, updating signage, doing intersection markers, we did a big project where we upgraded some signage, particularly around the playground area, area uh, where we could get people on the trails more clearly, um, keeping up with the, um, um, uh, the dis debris and everything that's along the trails, the tread path, making sure that it's stable and sturdy and doing a lot of rock work. So just, just generally keeping the trails in order. Trailhead um, involves things like graffiti removal, unfortunately. Um, keeping the kiosk up to date, map, keeping the maps up to date. We contract to have updated maps up there and they're also available on our website. Um, uh, picking up trash, we, we did have a lot more usage just at the pavilion, so a lot more trash was generated from people just coming out and enjoying the picnic. So we've, we've kind of pitched in and helped with a lot of the trash removal that the city does a lot of that themselves, uh, but we've kind of just pitched in to help this year. Uh, so a lot of the things that we typically do, we, we kept doing. The one difference for us was is that a lot of times we have volunteers help us with those activities. And this year that was not available. Um, none of the organized activities were able to move forward. So our trail care partners could not get out on the properties and do their normal um, maintenance for us. So we kind of picked up the slack with staff um, and we've been doubling our efforts. We, we make twice as many trips now, both on trail and at trailhead, to try to keep up with that uh, usage that's there, uh, to keep the trails and, and the area as enjoyable as we can for all the users that are out there. Um, we um, um, also are very fortunate. We do have the two trail care partners I mentioned. We've got Northrop Grumman and Madison Rotary who are both still our trail care partners. We've been in contact with them. They think they're gonna be able to start doing some activities in the next two or three months. So we're looking really forward to getting that routine back and getting them back out there to be our eyes so that we can uh, depend on them to, to do that light maintenance work that they do for us and then schedule the bigger work days uh, when they identify bigger projects. Uh, but when we do get them back on the ground, we were very fortunate Northrop Grumman gave us a grant this year. So we were able to build a little tool 
uh, shed on the back of the kiosk there, and they gave us enough money to actually put tools in it. So <laughs> now whenever our volunteers do come out, they don't have to wait on us to bring them tools. We have to worry about the logistics of, you know, what do they need to be able to do their work. We've got everything there so they can get what they need, work much more independently. So we're very appreciative of that. It's the first one that we've done. We're kind of using it as a prototype to do on our other preserves as well. So we're excited that when we do get our folks back out there, they'll be ready to go. I mentioned that we do uh, pride ourselves on connecting people with nature. And the way we largely do that is through our guided hikes. Again, uh, they had to be curtailed. We did some virtual um, activities um, in the interim. And then this winter, we did begin having some limited sized guided hikes. So we had three guided hikes out on Rainbow over the last uh, couple of months. Two of our Mushroom ID hikes, which I think are the most favorite hike of any hike we do on any of our nature preserves. Um, and also a history hike up on uh, Rainbow Mountain. We've got three more scheduled in the next couple of months. Um, on March 27th, we're doing an archeology span hike at Rainbow. April the 3rd, we're doing a geocache hike. And on May the 2nd, we'll be doing a spring migration birding hike out at Bradford Creek. Um, a lot of people don't realize that a little over a mile of the Greenway, Bradford Creek Greenway actually goes across land trust property. So we like to highlight that property as well and get people out there to enjoy it. Uh, the other way that we really get people engaged is through our education programming. Again, that had to be completely rethought because we provide uh, field trip opportunities to the, the schools and all field trips were canceled. So um, our education committee got together and we started reaching out to schools and said, you know, is there a way that we could provide on campus environmental education until we get back into a normal routine of field trips? Um, we reached out to Madison City Schools. They were very um, open to the idea. Uh, the administration toured us through the uh, elementary and middle school campuses. Uh, we came up with programs that could work given the natural surroundings they had at the schools. Um, and we're actually doing our first program tomorrow at Madison Elementary on photosynthesis with the fifth graders. So we're really excited to be able to continue to at least engage the, the younger folks in environmental education. Um, of course, we do have other properties in the city of Madison, so we're always dealing with those um, kind of urban natural interfaces with our neighbors, HOAs, and, and just private property owners. Um, that ranges from wildlife encounters to uh, hazardous tree removal. Um, so this year we had our first trespass hunting issue where we were involved in trying to resolve um, that whole bizarre incident. Um, and as always, we do have money earmarked for uh, conservation um, and trail building in the city of Madison. So we are always open to any conversation about a project that might be available. Please just let me know. Uh, love to increase that the natural area here in the, in the city of Madison and get more people involved in being outside. So I think with that, if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. I'll just say thank you very much for your assistance with the Hunter. I really appreciate that. And um, also wanted to share, you know, you've started the Mill Creek Greenway extension that will go through Land Trust property, um, the corner of Browns Ferry and Balch. So thank you so much for your support with that. It'd be another amenity and opportunity for our citizens to have more outdoor space. And I just wanted to thank you for a rainbow. I'm out there two, three times a week. I have never seen any trash. It is always looking very good. Everybody's always so respectful when they're walking. So, you know, you keep the distance, but everybody's been enjoying the outdoors. Yeah. And so I just really want to thank you for all the time. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Mr. Mr. Jeff Birdwell from the EMA. How you been since we saw you last, Jeff? Anything new? <laughs> There's always something new. <laughs> this has been a a, a unique uh, year. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Mayor Council. Uh, I certainly appreciate you uh, having me here to speak to you tonight. Uh, we certainly appreciate all your support. Uh, before I get started, I would like to recognize Mr. Kerry Straub. He is your representative to the EMA board. He is here uh, tonight and certainly appreciate his support and leadership as well. Uh, so I'll try to be brief. Uh, I know you have got a busy night. Mm. I mean, what else can we say? Uh, I mean, this slide here, probably says it all. So kind of what I wanted to do tonight was kind of give you an idea of how, you know, this year has transpired with, with COVID in our organization. This is a slide I showed you last year 
of all the outreach that we did. Uh, you know, as, as you know, I'm a big proponent for public education and outreach. But, you know, with COVID, basically it just was not possible. Uh, you know, I always like to, to, you know, kind of show some of the research. Again, research shows that uh, for every $1 spent on preparedness, it will actually save you six in response and recovery. Again, wasn't able to get out like we wanted to, but uh, that is still a goal of ours. And, and as soon as, you know, the situation warrants, we, we will actually get back to that. So, uh, activations actually were down a little bit this year. Now there's probably 16, you know, it says 15, should be 16, because, you know, when you compare COVID, you know, we're still activated and still responding to that as we speak now. So to kind of give you an idea how we have dealt with uh, COVID, and, and this may be familiar to some of you as, as we had you at EMA not, not too long ago, you know, we do basically three things, uh, situational awareness, logistics, and coordination. Um, early on in the pandemic, uh, you know, PPE was an issue. Uh, it, it wasn't the fact that people didn't have money to buy it. It, it just was not there. Uh, and it stayed that way for several months. So I won't go over the numbers, but uh, these are at least for the first probably six months. This is PPE that we were able to acquire through our channels, through uh, the state EMA, as well as Alabama Department of Public Health to our first responders. That's fire departments. That's law enforcement. Uh, we even uh, were able uh, to help out on, on certain occasions to, you know, all the school systems with masks. Uh, nursing homes, you know, we didn't get to have education and outreach with them this year, but there were cases to where we, they had some shortfalls with PPE and we were able to, uh, you know, meet at least some of their needs. And, and this is just an idea of, of the amounts that we were able to acquire. Again, the good thing about this, it, it was at no cost to any organization. Uh, situation awareness and coordination, um, you know, we hosted daily and weekly conference calls. I say daily and weekly because as Mayor Finley knows, when, when COVID first hit mm -hmm. at the middle of March uh, for six days a week, we hosted a press briefing and a conference call before the press briefing each, each, each time. Um, again, uh, we conducted the, the daily and the weekly press briefings. Uh, we're, we're down to weekly now, and, and I'll be the first to admit, and I know y'all will, Y'all will be glad to stop seeing me say that. <laughs> uh, we also assisted in the vaccination planning. Uh, you know, this was a huge issue when it first came out. You know, everybody wanted a shot, and, and, I, and I get that. But the state had set priorities, and one of the things we were able to do was work with our local uh, uh, health department and, and, you know, trying to address some of the needs that our first responders have, especially the firefighters, the law enforcement, and, and some of the other first responders. Uh, and then uh, basically on the situational awareness, we, we just uh, basically provided data updates. Uh, I have to be honest with you, being my first pandemic and hopefully my last pandemic, you know, data collection was a little unique. You know, we know what data to collect on a tornado or, you know, a, another natural disaster. But, you know, this one, it took us a little while to say, okay, what, what, data do we need and, and what information tells us what we need to know to how to respond accordingly and, and kind of give us an idea of what success looked like. Uh, I do want to mention this. Uh, I met with, Mayor Finley probably doesn't remem remember this, but I met with him a couple of years ago. Um, and we, we have had for since probably 2002 a medical reserve corps which was uh, a nonprofit organization that basically uh, retired nurses, physicians, nurse practitioners, so that, you know, if you had an emergency like a tornado and you had uh, shelter tents and you needed first aid there, they were there for that. Well, about two or three years ago, they, they lost a lot of their funding. Uh, and basically, we're, we're probably going to be inactive. So what we did is we, we, we volunteered to step up and say, okay, we'll be the help will be the sweat equity. And, and I bring this up because this is a real good success story. After taking it over a couple of years ago, uh, we are to the point where we actually had members of this going out and giving vaccinations for flu and COVID-19. And we're not where we want to be, 
but this is just an example of where this community pulls together and actually can be prepared and, and put some good things together. Uh, I was going to plug for our mass notification system. Uh, it, it's on our website how to do it. We encourage everybody uh, to, uh, you know, sign up for this. You're able to get alerts through us, you know, weather warnings and other types of warnings. You know, you have the option of phone call, text, email, or a combination of any of those. And I have to put this slide in here because my board member is a big proponent of this. He is here tonight, but uh, <laughs> uh, we, we do social media. Uh, we have several platforms and we're actually up. We have 4,200 followers on Facebook. We're actually up probably about 1,500 on the Civic Ready. We, we were about you know, somewhere a little, little above 8,000 last year. And, and of course we have uh, Twitter as well. So we're available through that as well. And I told you I'd be brief. Uh, <laughs> questions. I, I, I know this, uh, you know, Mayor Finley and I have seen a lot of each other <laughs> over the last year. And I like his company, but, you know, when he sees a lot of me, that's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> so, but I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Well, I just wanted to say thank you, Jeff. I cannot imagine the year that you have had. And just starting from the beginning, you know, in the very beginning of COVID, we weren't sure what was going on. There seemed to be a lot of misinformation. And every day at noon, you were there to just kind of say, okay, here, this is a current update. This is what you need to do. And you brought in experts um, like Mr. Spillers and, uh, you know, all the, the people that really knew what we needed to do and what we needed to not do. And so I just appreciate your leadership over the last year. I hope you've slept. <laughs> we did. Uh, I can't imagine the stress that you've had, but you've done a fabulous job. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I had somebody ask, and I'll leave it to this. I had somebody ask me a question the other day. Are you going to miss saying stay safe, stay separate, and remember to sanitize. <laughs> I looked at him and said, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> so again, I thank you for your, your support. Thank, thank you. So thank much, you. That's all we have for presentation and awards. We'll move into pu public comments. I don't have anybody signed up tonight, but if somebody would like to come address council. Amelia Jackson, Ashley Estates. Good evening, Council President Shaw and Council Members, all districts. Thank you, thank you, Council President Shaw, for allowing me to speak. Happy International Women's Day. Without women in our life, none of us would be here tonight. So I'd like to shout out to all the women everywhere, especially on Zoom. I know that the Zoomers don't get to speak as people publicly here get to speak. I know that you have to sign up before. I know that Zoom is not used as it's intended. I do appreciate Zoom. I never know how I feel from moment to moment. And even though the city of Madison has had Zoom licensing since the beginning of the pandemic, which would probably be almost a year, it is good finally to have a Zoom option. Speaking directly to the council is hard for some. I don't mind speaking, but I never know how, as I said, I'll feel. I'm very glad that Mr. Willard Brooks had a very positive experience with uh, the Disability Advocacy Board, and I'm glad that he was able to speak via Zoom. I never know really if my words make a difference. I have many council members that communicate with me often and promptly. I have some that have many outstanding emails, but I know that the public gets shamed here often, so I won't try to shame anyone directly. I know that many folks here have master's degree and doctorates, and that email has been a formal form of communication for over a decade. I also know that certain folks, particularly if they have dissent, are not responded to. It is not appreciated, it's not appropriate, 
and you do work for the taxpayer. We're in the backyard of the greatest technology in the entire state. We're in the company of many other Alabama cities that choose transparency for their citizens. And I'm not against my city. I'm very proud of my city. But when I come to speak, I'm not talking bad about the city. If people don't agree with me, I'm trying to help actually my appointed as well as my elected officials. Madison, Alabama should be the first in transparency. It should be the first for recording all meetings, public, all meetings for government actually works and it's being done. My request is I'm asking for all meetings in all instances where government work is being done or the taxpayer's money is being decided should be posted on the internet as well as recorded. I know that in some meetings, particularly for developers and or other planning members, you can call in to YouTube. So it really just depends. We have a tale of two different people. You have the people that are able to have accommodations, and then you have the folks that aren't able to have accommodations. So my request, again, I'm requesting that all meetings should be recorded and posted on the internet long term. This does not cost the city money. You can make it about the employees if you wish, which I hope you don't because no one wins there. You can make it about some sort of technological problem. It's really not there. People know from church, if an 85 year old grandmother can figure out Zoom, I think Madison, Alabama can. So this is a win-win. Since public comments rarely match council meeting minutes, and I've already sent several emails about what I perceive as censorship, other folks may not, but I do. So when I speak and I give you even an electronic copy and you still can't put it in the minutes, but yet when someone gets money from the taxpayer here, they get to speak as much as they want. They get to put anything in the, in the packet, which is huge by the way, with all of the um, slides. So I, I really think I've probably beaten a dead dog to death, but it is so ridiculous that a taxpayer has to beg in this day and age for something that should have been done a decade ago for, for the public record to be the minimum, the legal minimum, instead of what could be done. So I would like to also positively say and highlight that my council member Renee Bartlett, District 5, who is being very transparent with her campaign promises when she ran for city council, she will be the first council member in years, yes, years, to have a town hall. It has not happened. You can say, well, not most people come. Well, we only get to speak a few minutes. We're treated differently. We're not treated the same as a developer. We're not treated the same as someone who comes and makes, asks for money. We're not treated the same. Now, I'm sure if I were connected in a certain way to certain folks, I might be treated differently. But I just want to make that point. It's going to be Thursday night by a Zoom. I hope even if you're not District 5, you will come because there will be things decided by the Department of Engineering. And uh, big things are coming, particularly with roundabouts. I want to also say that I have two quick questions. So this I am addressing Jackson, to the council. I want to continue to speak. I want to continue to speak. I know that way, most people, I'd want to continue way, way to past. speak. I have two questions. I want to know, I know most people have heard about the Athens Los Limestone conspiracy fraud of school officials with monies and online students. I want to know here at the council, who is overseeing online students so that that doesn't happen in our school system. And I'm not accusing anybody. I just wanna know who does it because the folks in power are appointed. If this were to ever happen, is there a mechanism to ensure that it doesn't happen to our city? Second quiz question, and I appreciate you, President Shaw. Did Athens Limestone County situation hurt Madison City Schools in any way? And I'd like to thank you for your indulgence and for all of you that serve our great city of Madison, Alabama. Thank you. Does anyone else would like to address council? Um, I go ahead, Ms. Phoebe. Okay. 
Maybe Archie 109, Radisson Lane. Oh, sorry, get my paper here. Uh, I've just got two little things here. I know, I don't know whether you can do anything about this, but you know, I always talk about the traffic. Well, I don't know how many of you go through the light at uh, on 72 at Ball, at, at uh, Wild Triana or at Hughes, but I was at Wild Triana the other day and it took me 10 minutes to get through it. Now the cars coming from the north, going toward Huntsville, taking a left turn, blocked the intersection over and over and over. Couldn't get across. I assume that's against the law. I don't know whether the city of Madison has anything to do with that or can police that. I'm sure it happens at the other intersections also, but it it is it's it's, it's not not right. Okay, hopefully that will improve. Uh, another thing is the benches. Uh, Greg has something on his agenda today about benches for home place park. Oh, about many months ago, I mentioned something that. Well, it's been over a year because I haven't been to the senior center in a year. Some of the seniors up there like to walk on the path at um, Hughes and, and ask me to ask you all to put benches on that path. I don't know whether they have or not because I don't walk on that path. Uh, but uh, so if you don't put them on home place, I think you should put them on uh, Hughes Road also, on the, on the path. I don't know. There's like three or four. I don't are know there some there? I, I think. I'm, I may not be 100% sure. I'm going to look. I thought there was but, some that uh, can't. I, I just noticed out. it was not. going to be at home place. Uh, I think it would be a good idea to have them, especially if seniors are working on that thing. They need to stop and rest a lot more often than other people. Thank you. I will, I some leftover I will not use my. Uh, oh, I do have one. Huh? No, ma'am. Go ahead. One other thing. You know, I asked about a picture of people that are on Zoom. That little picture up there might as well not be there. That's an inch by an inch on what is that? I don't know how big that screen is, but I mean, to me, we should have a picture of people on Zoom that oh, you can see. Can't, you can't really tell anything about that, about that picture. I don't know that much about Zoom, but- uh, Yes, ma'am. I still we're, like to see- We're trying to learn about it still. Is there anyone else? No, Connie had something. I have a constituent who sent an email. He's um, unable to um, come tonight because he's out of town, but he's joined us on Zoom. It's Mike Callahan. And he sent, um, he lives on Corinne Drive, and I don't remember the street number. And he sent some um, questions. So I'd just like to read the questions, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Okay. Um, is regarding the westbound town Madison ramps on I-565. He wants to know when the city found out or figured out that there was not enough funding to build the westbound ramps. He would also like to know the key dates for the bid process for those ramps. When did the town Madison owner publish the request for bids? When were the bids due? What was the planned award date? What was the desired required completion date? How did the city participate or stay informed of the process and progress? So if we could get some answers for him, that would be great. Yeah. Is there anyone else? That was public comments. Moving to consent agenda and finance committee report. Finance committee did not meet this evening. However, we did review the, the Periodic bills, everything can be in order. Um, and uh, and the, 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 the gentleman I'll let you are made about the uh, donation. But, you want me to do that now or you want to make a motion? Go ahead and make a show. I just point out the acceptance of the donation $1,000 from the Harris family. Uh, for general fire department use. I know uh, Chief over there will find a good place to, to use that, so. That, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any any discussion? I get the vote, please. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. 
Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Motion passes. Moving to our presentation of reports, and we'll start with the mayor. All right, and I'll start by asking for council approval of resolution number 2021-83-R, approving the annual appropriation agreement with Land Trust of North Alabama for the FY21 appropriation of $10,000 to be paid from the general fund. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Motion in a couple of seconds. Uh, any, any discussion? I'll get the vote, please. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. The motion passes. All right. And secondly, I ask for council approval of resolution number 2021-84-R, approving the annual appropriation agreement with EMA for $57,500 to be paid from the general fund. Move to approve resolution 2021-84-R. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? And I'll just add what Jeff did throughout the course of this pandemic. Each day for the longest time at 11 o'clock, we held a community conference call and Jeff orchestrated that. You know, one of the examples I would give early on is uh, the while a lot of the cities were getting uh, PPE, the nursing homes weren't to the level that they needed to. We very quickly, because of that conversation, were able to get that out to the senior centers excuse me, to the nursing homes. And a lot of the reason I think we had success in this area was because of those quick actions and those calls that, that, that continued to happen. We would then go to the 12 o'clock call. So he orchestrated that. They did a great job. And obviously when we need them, uh, uh, it's, it's money well spent. Very good. We get the vote, please. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. M motion passes. All right, and a couple of other quick things here. Um, I know right now, talking with uh, Terry Towery and HR this morning, we have about 50 applicants right now for a police chief position that's open. Uh, they will be starting the process of, they go they match the, the applications with uh, the qualifications. Uh, so over the course of March, we'll be working through that. Probably have the initial interviews in April with a goal of bringing three to five folks to council sometime in the first couple of weeks in May. So we'll continue to work that process. That won't be the only one that Terry and I are working on, as I also have two retirements to announce tonight. Uh, one is our uh, city clerk treasurer, Melanie Williard, is retiring. And the second is our city engineer, Gary Shanaweth, is retiring. They both have given us uh, time throughout the course into early summer to work on replacements. And so we will be working on both of those. That's close to 50 years of experience uh, retiring within the city of Madison. And uh, wanted to announce those and let everybody know that uh, we'll be working to, to fill those positions as quickly as we can. With that said, that's all I have, Greg. All right, Commissioner number one. Uh, yes, sir. I have two items that I wanted to mention. First, uh, many folks have been enjoying the Mill Creek Greenway extension, and I've reached out to the mayor's office and Parks and Rec and requested some dogway stations, trash cans, and benches, and those have been ordered and I know will be put uh, to good use because it has become so popular. And the second item I wanted to mention is McDab, as we've talked about earlier tonight, is stands for the Madison City Disability Advocacy Board, has partnered with Staples and we've been able to deliver 91 safety kits to our special ed teachers in the city of Madison that contain spray disinfectant, paper towels, and a, a case box of gloves for them to use in their classroom, as well as Staples is also donating a $10 off any purchase of $20. And I just wanted to illustrate how this is such a great example of how the city supports the school. We support our uh, employees, our partners in education, and just want to give a shout out to Staples in Madison up on 72. Um, if you can get in there and, and get your office supplies there, uh, ask for Jimmy. He's been very helpful and very supportive, and I'm just so thankful to them for helping us with this donation and how it's really uh, reaching a population that often struggles, you know, teachers often have to, I have a teacher, I have a son that's a teacher who is saying, you know, next time you go to Costco, get me that case of Kleenex or whatever you can get for me. So just a great way for us to be able to support our partners in the city. 
and that's all I have. Yeah. Two. Um, I just wanted to real quick, um, I know that it'll be a little bit and I'm very happy that there, um, Melanie and Gary are gonna stay with us for a little while and help us um, navigate at least for a few more months, but y'all are so appreciated. All the work that y'all have done, the institutional knowledge that you have, and I just wanted to take a moment and thank both of you for your service to our city. And that's all I have. It's number three. I'll uh, I'll echo that. I mean, I, I've worked with both you guys now for the last five years, and you know, if it was up to me, I'd I'd keep you forever. But particularly as long as I was here, you know, you guys make my job a lot easier. And uh, I, I appreciate both of you guys here. That's really great. So if you ever need anything from me personally, you've got my phone number. Number five. I have a resolution for your consideration, number 2021-79-R, authorizing professional services agreement with Rice Advisory LLC for independent Municipal Financial Advisory Services. Move to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Is there any uh, discussion? I just want to fill in a few details about the uh, financial advisor that the city uh, that we're recommending for the city to hire. Um, we put out an RFP in January and proposals were submitted on February 4th. We had an interview committee that interviewed three finalists. All three finalists were outstanding. We uh, settled on Rice Advisory for the following reasons. 100% of their work is focused on financial advisory work. They don't do work on both sides of the aisle, so they're not underwriters. Completed, they have completed over $7 billion, that's B billion, in public financing transactions. They've worked extensively with analyzing school system financings as a consultant to the State Department of Education and they understand how city and school debt are intertwined. Their economic development deals and examples were impressive as they helped negotiate and make presentations to city councils, even recommending to walk away from some deals that didn't seem to make sense. And so um, I highly recommend uh, the council's approval of this resolution. Any other, any other discussion? Yeah, I, I just wanna thank Renee, she kinda, Headed this up for the most part, and, uh, came up with all the questions and asked the questions, and kind of just let me sit on the sidelines and and uh, look really pretty. And I didn't do a good job with that. She did a lot better job than I did. But uh, I just want to thank her for her leadership in that. Yeah, thanks, Paul, for being involved. He was involved as I was. He was a lot better looking. Than that. <laughs> okay. Very good. We got a motion and a uh, and a second. So can I get the vote? Vote, please. Councilmember Denzine? Aye. Councilmember Spears? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Councilmember Robleski? Aye. Councilmember Powell? Aye. Councilmember Bartlett? Aye. Councilmember Seifert? Aye. Motion passes. And then I had just a couple of things. Um, Ms. Jackson had mentioned that there is a town hall this Thursday at 6 p.m. I'm going to be joined by our engineer, Gary Chnalis, and Jason Leggett from Madison Utilities. And also Chief Bailey is going to be there and we're going to set out some information and then open it up for conversation with whoever is in attendance or whoever is attending by Zoom. You will not need to reserve time to speak. A town hall is less formal than a city council meeting. And we're working on how to record certain portions of that so that you can see it later if you're not able to attend or uh, watch via Zoom. And then uh, during public comments, Ms. Jackson asked a couple of questions. And I know I heard uh, Phoebe ask us last time that we don't only answer questions from people on Zoom, but also answer questions from people in the audience. And so, Ms. Jackson, I'm going to do my best to answer the two questions that you posed. The first question, you were concerned about what had happened in Athens and Limestone County. And you're wanting to know how do we ensure that this is not happening with our own school system and virtual students. Uh, first, you should know that the school board in Madison sets the rules for who can attend Madison City Schools. And that's who can attend face-to-face -face or who can attend virtually. And currently, 
the only people who can attend Madison City Schools are either those who reside in Madison or those who reside in the town of Triana or those who are children of employees of Madison City Schools. Unlike Athens and Limestone that had a virtual school program that allowed students to attend outside of zone, Madison City does not have that. So even though they offer virtual learning options, those are for students who are zoned for Madison City Schools only. So there will not be that type of counting issue. Your second question was um, what type of, how has this scheme hurt Madison City Schools? I think that was the nature of the question. We do not know yet. I know that the superintendent is looking into that with his chief school financial officer to see how that impacted the allocation through the ETF that Madison City Schools would receive on the Limestone County side. Mayor Finley and I and Mrs. Spears have all reached out to the school system to offer our support when they should need it. But at this point, it is in their hands to determine through their accounting methods, uh, how that has affected their budget and their funding for the ETF. So I hope I, Mayor Finley, have I Head on. anything? Okay. One little thing, it, the ETF is the Education Trust Fund and that's how schools are funded in the state of Alabama. And happy International Women's Day to you too, Ms. Jack. Mm -hmm. That's it. And district number six. First, I just wanted to give an update on where we stand with the Police Citizen Advisory Committee. So far, we have received 38 qualified applications, and then there's another 13 that are incomplete. I am just thrilled that so many people are willing to be on this and make a difference in Madison. I really believe this will improve the relationship between law enforcement and citizens. And um, so if you're still contemplating getting on this board, it's not too late. You can get your application in. Just go to the website. It's pretty easy to fill out. Please really consider it if you are anywhere interested in it. And also those that have the incomplete, please get online, fix what needs to be fixed. It'd be a shame if you missed out simply because it was an omission. So I would just really encourage everyone to be involved with that. Um, it's a great thing. And I'm also continuing to do research. In fact, today I emailed uh, Megan with a question about bylaws and stuff. So the more I'm informed, informed on this, the better I can make decisions, I think. And the better we can make the whole program. I'm just so excited about this stuff. I'm thrilled. Um, the second thing is on the Zoom views. It was 1,425 people have watched these in the last two weeks. I think that just proves how interested the citizens are in their local government. Again, I am just thrilled with that number that so many people care. Um, and I'm grateful that you are participating. Uh, the more access to every meeting, the more informed you are on the things that impact your lives. Uh, so please, and if you have anything you wanna add, anything that you're concerned about, please either come or make an appointment on Zoom. We really do want to hear. And we are grateful for those that do come forward. I know, speaking to them, but I have to look over. For those that do put forth the time, it is greatly appreciated. And I do also support having all these things continue to be on the website. Um, I know at one point we decided it would go off after two weeks while we looked into the cost. So I believe Jason has looked into the cost. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so at some point we can again, go back and look at that again and make a firm decision on keeping them? On, yes, absolutely. Okay. All right, in the next work session, perhaps? Is that the proper yeah, time? I, I don't know about this, yeah, whenever. Yeah. I don't know if it's on this one, we'll wait and see how long it goes. We're also looking at some of the legality pieces of it too, to make sure we've got that covered along with costs. And so when we bring it all together, whenever you tell us we need to do it. Okay, sooner the better, but let's move. Uh, also, I'd like to see us do the work sessions and uh, I know the discussion, it's really nice to be in room 130 and have kind of a, a more easier to discuss kind of a space. But also if we do it in there, can we still have cameras? Because I would like to also have the work sessions put out 
I think that's when we do a lot more discussing of the details of things. So I, I definitely support that too. All right, the next thing, Red Cross Preparedness Summit. I uh, participated in that virtually this last week. You know, and they have such a vast array of services that they provide um, that you, you forget about. You know, Red Cross is just always there. It's always been kind of a part of things, but it was really great to hear all the things that they are doing. Anything from single family homes to massive disasters. But I'm bringing this up because they really are looking for volunteers. They need people that can do the best disaster event based volunteers. Just simple jobs, right? That take very little training, but they're so crucial at that time of the disaster. Um, just like greeters, food prep, registration, warehouse workers, assisting drivers, meeting people at the airport. Simple things that can be done that are so essential in a time of disasters. So if you're interested in that, you can either contact me or you can go directly to the Red Cross slash volunteers. Ah, the last thing, the roundabout issues. I've made a joke recently that it's not rocket science. And I don't mean to be the least bit insensitive about that because it's unusual for us. But really, for all those that have lived overseas, you understand how really easy it is. Because all you have to do here is yield to the left. And anybody that's coming around, you look, wait for them to go by, and then you get in. And then if you go around and you miss your get off, you just go around again. You just go around again. And then you can get off when you're ready, if that's what it takes until you're used to it. But it's really simple. And I'm pretty sure by the time everybody gets used to this, they're going to want them in a lot more places because they really do move the traffic so much easier. It doesn't have that stop. You don't have to wait for a light. You don't have to do any of that. You just have to look to your left. It's kind of like merging onto 565, right? It's just a lot slower. And that's it's really all it is. So I know there's concerns out there and I understand them, but I think if we're all just kind of patient within the first couple of months, you're going to say, let's have more. But that's just my thought. And as we are entering the SEC Basketball Championship Week, roll tide. <laughs> and that's it. Very good. Four seven. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess the only thing I got is express uh, appreciation for Gary and uh, Melanie as well for your time here and, and uh, as you transition out, really appreciate all you've done and uh, you leave some big shoes to be filled. So thank you. Um, so I, I got, um, I also want to echo that with, uh, about Melanie and Gary. We really do appreciate y'all. No, Mel's tried to keep me straight the past four or five years, and um, I appreciate everything she's done. And Gary, th thank you for everything you've done in engineering and keeping our ditches our ditches clean and our um and our roads growing. Appreciate you. Um, I also have one resolution. Um, would like to uh, spend some money on some on some benches and a couple of tables and trash uh, trash cans at Home Place Park. It's not it's not to exceed fourteen thousand. I think it's closer to fourteen three or fourteen eight, but and there may be some shipping in there, but um, with that, um, I'd like to move to approve. Second. Is there any uh, discussion? I get the vote, please. Council, Member, Council President Shaw. Aye. Council Member Powell. Aye. Council Member Robleski. Aye. Council Member Spears. Aye. Council Member Bartlett. Aye. Council Member Denzine. Aye. Council Member Seifert. Aye. Motion passes. Move into board of committee appointments, and we have one. I have a board and committee appointment for a production board of appeals, place five, and I'd like to nominate David Hall. Anybody else has any other? Anybody else? That will move with David Hall with acclamation. I think, John, you said you had one. Yeah, if I may, and I apologize, and we went real quick at the beginning. Uh, I'd like to nominate for the rec advisory board. Uh, Jim Chamberlain. All right. Awesome. Have any any other any other nominees? If not, we'll move forward with him. Thank you. Now we'll move into uh, public hearings. We got a handful. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. You yeah, have uh, five alcohol public hearings this evening. Uh, the first one is a request from Humphrey Brothers Cigar Company, LLC, doing business the same. 
uh, they've requested a restaurant retail liquor license for their location uh, 112 Main Street in downtown. Uh, this is a new request for alcoholic beverages at this location. Uh, the police department has signed off, but as you can see, there's still com some construction going on. So if the council wishes to consent to the issuance of the license by the ABC board, uh, I would recommend give the um, approval and we'll have the local license uh, contingent on building and fire approval. Move to approve with those contingencies that it passes inspection with building and fire. I've got a motion and a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Sorry. Yep. I know. And I'm going to hold that thought. I'd like to open the public hearing. Anybody like to? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Everybody wants to hear. Yes, Downtown. Your drugstore. Well, are they going to be selling, um, serving liquor inside? Where are people going to park? And I'll park out back. In the parking lot that the city behind parking it. lot behind it yeah and you know they have there's parking in the front of it too but mm -hmm. that's for all of them i just wanted yes. to talk and follow these mm -hmm. yes. right next to old black bear kind of i'll say there yes. anyone else like to address council that will close public hearing and move to approve with those contingencies from building and fire passing i'll still second like Thank you. A second, is there any discussion? I, I just wanted to ask, is there still the plan to have the restaurant? They were going to have like, I think, cigars upstairs and then the Italian restaurant downstairs. Right there, There's the still the plan. Yes. Full restaurant. That's exciting. Yes. Sir. Oh, thank you. Very excited. All right. Can, can we get the vote, please? Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Cowell? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, the second one we have is a request for a restaurant retail liquor license from uh, Logan's Roadhouse to LLC doing business at Logan's Roadhouse 544. Uh, the reason for this public hearing is changing from Logan's Roadhouse Incorporated to Logan's Roadhouse to LLC. Uh, again, the police department has signed off. Uh, building and fire had a few things they want to get fixed up. So same kind of contingencies as last time. All right. I'd like to open public hearing. Anybody like to address council? If not, we'll close public hearing. Motion and a second. Any any discussion? Can I get the vote, please? Councilmember Powell. Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. And motion passes. Okay. The uh, third one we have it's a request for an off premise beer and wine license from Victory Marketing LLC doing business at Sprint Mark 2316. Uh, this is the Shell Station um, south on Wall Triana, down by the Cracker Barrel restaurant. Um, the reason for this public hearing, um, this business has been sold by the Spencer Companies to uh, Victory Marketing LLC. And everything is in order for this request to be considered. All right. I'd like to open the, uh, the public hearing. Close the uh, public hearing. Move to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Can we get the vote, please? Council Member Seifert? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member C uh, Denzine? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, the fourth one we have uh, request from Victory Marketing LLC doing business at Sprint Mark 2307. Uh, this is up the uh, northwest corner of uh, Highway 72 and Waltrina Highway. This is going to be the left side of the building where the convenience store and the off-premise beer and wine is located. Uh, again, the business has been sold. The uh, police background check was fine, but the building and fire had a few uh, minor repairs they wanted to have done on it. Are you sure that's not the northeast corner? You're correct, northeast mm -hmm. corner. Thank you. 
I thought I'd get through all five of these. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to open the uh, the public hearing. Yes, ma'am. Will you come up? Will you come up here so everybody can hear you on Zoom. Uh, I am the manager, and I manage this uh, package store. We do cards. We make sure our license is up to date. Yes, ma'am. We make sure that we don't have any disruption. We do what we're supposed to. Yes, ma'am. The city and the city is good to us. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for being here. Anyone else like to address? If not, we'll close the public hearing. Move to approve. With the, you want the contingencies? But yes, yeah, with the contingency. Hearing. Sorry. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Make it the vote, please. Councilmember Spears? Aye. Councilmember Seifert? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzi? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, in the last one, uh, Victory Marketing LLC doing business is Sprint Mark number 2307 package store. Uh, they've requested a lounge retail liquor class two package store license. This is on the right side of the building. Again, it's gonna be on the Northeast corner of Waltrain and Highway 72. Uh, police background check was fine. Uh, there are cons some contingencies for a building and fire. Right, open the uh, public hearing. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We'll close the public hearing. Move to approve, subject to the contingency. Second. Get motion and a second. Can we get the vote? Is there any any discussion? Get the vote, please. Councilmember Seifert? Aye. Councilmember Spears? Aye. Councilmember Smith? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> DZ Top heard about all these. heard all these. You can act like you did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I don't know where we were. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Motion pa passes. Even with easy top in the room. Let me call BB again. <laughs> <laughs> now we got engineering with uh, all the department reports. I've got two items for you tonight. First one, I'm requesting approval for resolution number 2021-76-R, consenting to assign uh, assignment of road construction contracts from Reed Contracting Services to the Rogers Group. Uh, Reed has been bought out by the Rogers Group. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any, any discussion? Can we get the vote, please? Council Member Robleski? Aye. Councilmember Seifert? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. And motion passes. I'm also requesting approval for resolution number 2021-78-R, authorizing an agreement with TPL Incorporated for the preparation of a construction best maintenance practices plan for Oakland Spring Branch Greenway. It's the amount of uh, $8,500 and it's out of the department budget. Move to approve resolution 2021-78-R. Okay. Now you said 85, but this says 65, so. I'm sorry, my reading is okay. Good. All right, I just wanna make sure, I just wanna make sure we can change it. <laughs> sorry. All right. Any, any discussion? Can we get the vote, please? Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. And motion passes. Thank G you very much. Thank Gary, you very before you go, my favorite constituent that lives at my house, uh, I, it just popped into my head. Is there any update on the signal timing at the corner of Walter Anna and Gillespie 
uh, and Waltriana. There was another one, but we'll, oh, Browns Ferry. Waltriana and Browns Ferry, Waltriana and Gillespie. He went to church Sunday morning. He had camera at seven o'clock and like BB waited 10 minutes. So it wasn't 10 minutes. Was I don't think the timing is the issue. I think there are some sensor uh, problems or detection problems. Okay. Public Works is aware that some of the detection is not working properly. Okay. We are trying to work with them to make recommendations for awesome. some replacements. Thank you very much. I think much. the timing is not the issue. Okay, it's the sensors. While you're checking, check the one leaving James Clemens too. <laughs> that one should be pretty good. Now, James Clemens will wait for a while, but. Uh, we were there over 10 minutes the other night. That should not happen. Uh, what time? Uh, it was like 8 39 o'clock. We actually wound up making a right turn and going down and turning around. Okay, we'll have to check. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gary. Next, we have fire. We have one for your consideration tonight resolution number 202177R, authorizing agreement for receipt of emergency management grant funds to purchase equipment for our heavy tactical rescue team. Uh, $26,141 will be reimbursed from the Alabama Homeland Security Program for that. So that'll come out of our budget, for that, out of our department budget. Very good. Move to approve. Second. Get a motion. Whichever second you want to pick. Got Teddy in. Honey. All right. Got a motion and a second. Here's women's Any day. Discussion? Women's day. I can vote, please. Councilmember Robleski? Aye. Councilmember Spears? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Councilmember Powell? Aye. Councilmember Bartlett? Aye. Councilmember Denzine? Aye. Councilmember Seifert? Aye. Motion passes. Next, we got planning. I think this is the least you've ever been up here, Mary Beth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Let's see, we have proposed ordinance 2021-48. This is vacation of easement. Uh, this is the Madison utility site out um, in the town Madison area where they they um, consolidated parcel. And so it's just vacation of an easement. A couple of them actually. Move to approve. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hand the vote please. Council member Seifert. Aye. Council member Spears. Aye. President Shaw? Aye. Councilmember Robleski? Aye. Councilmember Powell? Aye. Councilmember Bartlett? Aye. Councilmember Denzi? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. My favorite band. Aye. Are there any miscellaneous business or announcements? I've got to ask, are the words on this, do they get our kind of food? Because I might not have all There he is. They do. <laughs> you can go back and watch it, and it has Karen dancing all night long. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. So move. Move to adjourn. Yeah.